Hey everybody, happy Monday. So this week we're gonna talk about PMS and I have lots of little nuggets to share with you so I'm gonna jump in fairly quickly. Um, and I really enjoy talking about this subject as well because it spans such a good chunk of many women's lives who suffer from PMS. About 80% of women will suffer from PMS either consistently from the on start of their periods all the way through menopause or intermittently throughout life. There are things that can cause PMS to come and go and come and go, such as giving birth to a child or terminating a pregnancy, starting, um, stopping birth control pills, um, for example, uh, just to name a few. Um, but what I find fascinating about this is that it was PMS was not really technically a thing until like the early to mid 80s. Um, there was an article written about it in a major publication um, and then other media started to pick up on it and it created this groundswell of um, attention. And before this time, PMS was not something that we really talked about. It was not an official diagnosis. There was no research that was really done about it. And you know, it was a thing that millions of women suffer from this disorder um, that no one was talking about. And I think it's just yet another instance in which uh, the uniqueness of women's bodies historically has gone unrecognized um, and uh, catered to in the way that it needs to. Fortunately, we live in an era where we fully acknowledge that PMS is not just in our heads, it is a real thing, and some women suffer chronically and terribly from it. So today I'm gonna to share just a few pieces of information to help you understand why you might be experiencing PMS and stick with me throughout the rest of the week to learn some tips and best practices for dealing with it and let me know how I can help you. Okay, so what's happening at this point in the month when you are experiencing PMS? For some women, they feel like they're always experiencing PMS. Every time there's a fluctuation in the, their hormones throughout the normal ebbs and flows of your menstrual cycle, they feel it. Some women only feel it for two or three days just before their period starts, and some women feel it for that whole uh, seven to 10 days of the luteal phase of their cycle, which is that almost two week period um, before your cycle begins. It can vary. Um, for a lot of us, it starts um, smaller, even as early as when we're in our early teens, when our periods first start. And then as you get older and the imbalances start to get more significant, then you will feel more significant and prolonged symptoms. It's all over the map. Um, so during this time of your cycle, you'll have a pretty constant level of progesterone. Your body produces progesterone to keep the uterine lining intact in the event that you have a pregnancy and it needs that uterine lining for the baby to be nurtured. Um, so you've got that egg waiting to be fertilized. At some point, the body signals, stop making progesterone, the egg didn't fertilize this month, it's time to release that lining of the uterus and that triggers your period to start. But in those last, that last part of that luteal phase, as progesterone is gradually starting to decline, estrogen is starting to increase. Now, remember we've talked about, ideally, progesterone and estrogen need to be balanced in the body. Um, they pull in opposite directions, right? And so it should be an even tug of war situation. And when one is higher than the other, usually it's estrogen that's much higher and progesterone is much lower, um, then you start to experience symptoms and not feel great no matter what point in your cycle. If you have estrogen dominance, which is more estrogen in relation to other non-estrogen hormones, you are not going to feel great and it's gonna have a domino effect in your body. This is one of the underlying reasons for why PMS happens to begin with. So from a biohacking perspective, the trick is to get your estrogen and progesterone to be as balanced as possible at all times throughout the month, but especially during this PMS phase in the month. And there are lots of things that you can do. Um, primarily, loving that liver, we keep coming back to the liver. One of the liver's primary jobs is to break down and flush out of your body excess estrogen hormones. And so if the liver is not functioning optimally, you are going to experience estrogen dominance. It's as simple as that and you're not gonna feel great and your PMS symptoms are going to be exacerbated. Now, what can cause this estrogen dominance? Many of the things we've talked about prior to this point. 
eating a diet high in dairy, um, eating high levels of caffeine through soda, chocolate, coffee, um, especially during this PMS phase, um, eating foods that raise the blood sugar too quickly, which then result in elevated insulin levels, then creating hormone imbalance and subsequently cellular inflammation. A lot of PMS symptoms are rooted in overall inflammation in the body. Um, the high level of estrogen, again, then the connection between the liver, the liver needs vitamins to break down and inactivate that estrogen. What are those vitamins it needs? Complex Bs, especially B6 and B12, A vitamins, C vitamins, E vitamins, selenium, just to name a few. You get all of these vitamins in abundance in green leafy vegetables, whole grains, high fiber foods, uh, lower intake of dairy, um, meats, but you do need high quality proteins and high quality fats. Um, and then the last thing I'll share is there are a set of hormones in the body called prostaglandins. Um, and these hormones are synthesized through uh, healthy essential fatty acids. So eating those good fats, coconut oils, avocados, um, and so forth. Uh, and when you are low in healthy fats, your body has a hard time making appropriate amounts of prostaglandins. Um, and we see that there is uh, an imbalance in prostaglandins with women who have PMS, oftentimes women who have autoimmune issues, um, and any sort of underlying inflammatory um, issue. If you've seen me as a bioenergetic client, and you've, your prostaglandins have come up on your scan, you know we usually have a conversation about uh, where you're getting healthy fats in your diet, and you probably have a chronic uh, inflammatory issue. So here are just a few things that could be going on in your body if you experience chronic PMS or any sort of PMS symptoms at all, whether it is abdominal pain, headaches, insomnia, bloating, irritability, uh, the list can go on and on. There are more than 100 symptoms of PMS that women suffer from. So stick with me for this week. Thursday, I'll share a blog post that gives you some specific lifestyle changes that you can consider, as well as some suggested supplements to help you out if you want to take a more natural route to support yourself during those times of your monthly cycle. All right, everybody. Have a great Monday.